Welcome to the broadcast. An estimated 300 million guns are in the hands of U.S. citizens. That's almost one for every person in America. It's a staggering amount of firepower that many people around the world find difficult to comprehend. A majority of Americans are demanding that something be done to stop the gun violence following several shooting massacres in the United States. President Obama is urging Congress to renew a federal ban on so-called assault rifles, and he's calling for universal background checks on anyone buying a gun in the future. There is fierce resistance to these proposals from gun owners who claim their constitutional right to own firearms cannot be infringed. What has emerged is an emotionally charged national debate over guns that is testing the concept of freedom in America. In the Progan state of Alaska, many residents own more than just one firearm. And not surprisingly, perhaps, they remain united in their opposition to any form of gun control. America's now correspondent Mike Kirsch recently went to Alaska. He files this report. They say more people own more guns in Alaska than in any other U.S. state. And yet they boast fewer gun-related murders here per capita than the national average, with no gun massacres to date. The only way to stop a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. So I'm a retired teacher. I'm an environmental scientist. I'm a physician. Internal medicine. Short range is fun. Gun owner Dave Arino's occupation, he sells life insurance. and has a basement full of guns. Woof, woof. Come on. One, get. This just goes to show you that I keep my weapons locked. You got enough guns? No. Not at all. How many guns do you have? Somewhere between 180 and 200. Areno is also president of the Alaska Machine Gun Association, a statewide gun club known for its rather explosive summertime shoots in the woods, blasting away at and blowing up old automobiles and other targets with heavy cannons to 50 caliber machine guns. Appearing to some a rogue fringe group, they claim they are anything but. Members of the club include doctors, lawyers, police officers, and other professionals from across the state. Oh, yeah. With their little ones in tow. The club's co-founder is Mike Hawker, an elected representative of the Alaska State Legislature. I personally am a collector of historic firearms. I use them to teach uh, a lot of young people about the history of the firearm in the context of how it's been used to defend this country. No one here has a problem teaching kids how to shoot machine guns or with the club's rather brash in-your-face name. The Alaska Machine Gun Association, what a provocative name. Right, right. Too bad. Part of it is in-your-face. America's now has come to Alaska to talk to gun owners at a time when the United States, like never before, is gripped by a soul-searching national debate over how to curb gun violence in this country. A debate ignited by several recent gun-related mass murders, particularly the shooting massacre at Sandy Hook Elementary School in Newtown, Connecticut, that claimed the lives of 20 children and six adults in the school. The shooter, who would kill himself in the end, was 20-year-old Adam Lanza. Authorities say he suffered from a behavioral disorder known as Asperger syndrome. His shooting spree began when he shot his mother to death with one of her own guns in the family home before using them to murder school children at nearby Sandy Hook Elementary. We have to examine ourselves and our hearts. 
President Obama has responded to national outrage over Sandy Hook and other mass shootings by asking Congress to renew a federal ban on the kind of military-style so-called assault weapons Lanza used in the school shooting. For a reduction in the amount of bullets in high-capacity gun magazine clips from 10 to 7 rounds. And for universal background checks on anyone buying a firearm. More of our fellow Americans might still be alive. National polls indicate a little over half the American public supports these measures, while others, many of them gun owners like Dave Arino, do not. We're going to need voices in those areas, in those congressional districts where the tradition of gun ownership is strong to speak up. And to so say you're this. not going to get it. Arino is a card-carrying member of the NRA, one of approximately four and a half million members of the National Rifle Association the most tenacious gun rights lobbying organization in the U.S. That's putting heavy pressure on Congress to reject new gun measures that many gun owners perceive as a threat to the U.S. Constitution's Second Amendment right to keep and bear firearms. And the ability of gun owners to protect themselves and their children from the kinds of gun massacres that have taken place in other states. People will say, what am I afraid of? And quite frankly, I would say not a damn thing. I'm not a violent man, but I, I, I choose to have the right to protect myself. You have parents of children who've been murdered by firearms, by guns all over the country. They, they may say, come on, can't you guys just sacrifice? Can't you meet us halfway? No. No. Because they're, they're doing it based on emotion. They think, well, that gun made my sons go away, so those guns should go away. I think maybe the perception is that many gun owners, the gun lobby, the NRA, the National Rifle Association, are being insensitive after what happened in Connecticut at that school shooting. I don't feel that way at all. In fact, we love our children just as much as anybody else loves their children. Does that affect people? Of course it affects. But the idea is a guy who's mentally defective did this. This wasn't a normal, sane man who owned weapons legally. That wasn't the case at all. In Alaska, 60 percent of citizens, many of them hunters and gun enthusiasts, own one or more firearms, are allowed to carry concealed weapons on the streets under state law, and legally own popular AR-15 sporting guns like these that have a military look to them, yet fire only one shot at a time that nonetheless are referred to by the Obama administration as assault weapons that should be banned, when in fact these are not assault weapons, gun owners say, and should not be banned. That only these fully automatic machine gun type weapons are true assault weapons that, ironically, were already banned long ago by the federal government back in 1986, but can still be owned under federal law in dozens of pro-gun states like Alaska, pending a lengthy background check and clearance from the chief law enforcement officer in a community. Here in Anchorage, Alaska's largest city, that task goes to Police Chief Mark Mew. We do have an eclectic uh, collection of people here um, and it, to a, a some extent you could say that uh, folks that don't like rules and don't like regulation and, and want to do their own thing tend to migrate to places like this. Mew is keenly aware of the deadly nature of firearms. Seen here as a young police sniper 20 years ago, Mew would save the lives of several hostages by shooting and killing two hostage takers in separate incidents. It's not a good feeling, and you got to live with it. Mew also helped establish the use of armed uniformed police officers in Anchorage schools more than a decade ago that many credit for preventing school massacres seen in other states. We haven't had one here in Anchorage. Though parents in other cities across the U.S. have been skeptical about putting a walking gun inside schools. Men like Anchorage police officer Eric Pratt. The idea of putting an armed police officer in a school seems dangerous to them, that it would only create more problems. Yeah, I guess I... I guess I have a little bit of a hard time understanding that. Um, you know, as a, as a police officer myself, you know, I'm trained. Uh, I consider myself a professional. I think about these situations of, of you know, I what if these things all day long. You know, if this happened, how would we respond?
you know, how would we minim minimize casualties? How would we help keep people safe? Um, I've dedicated you know, 10 years of my life pretty much to, to doing that. Part of the strategy here in school, say police, is building trust with students and seeking their cooperation for information about any student contemplating doing harm to others. I feel safe. I just I like how there's police officers in the school. It just so be those like the things in Connecticut won't happen. But with cops in the school, I think people, if someone were to try that and they think and they know that a cop's in the school, they might think, you know, there's a chance of them getting shot a lot faster or something like that. As for guns on the streets of Alaska, police officers here are aware that half the Alaskans they come in contact with Anchorage Police, you inside, speak to me now, may be carrying one or have one or more guns in their homes. You assume everybody's got a gun. Um, and if you don't assume that, then you're probably in the wrong line of business. It doesn't affect you and the way you enforce the law. It doesn't bother you that you have that many guns out. Not at all. We are often, we being law enforcement, are often helped by people, civilians, citizens who have firearms. Ted Smith has been a cop in Anchorage for 30 years. Alaska statutes provide you not only the right to use non-deadly force, but deadly force to defend yourself. And there's actually part of the statute that allows you to use force, deadly and non-deadly, to defend a third party if you don't know them. It's written in the statute. I choose to have the right to enjoy the firearms, to collect them, to enjoy their history. That, above all, is what's important to me. If you're not happy with the government and they're oppressing you, this gives you the ability to fight back. I'm not fomenting revolution, I'm not saying that, but much like we broke off from Great Britain in the 1770s, the first thing they did when they came over was they tried to confiscate weapons at Lexington, and that's what started the Revolutionary War. Gunrunners, can you hold, please? I'll be right with you. Okay, what was that, sir? The Obama administration's attempt to outlaw military-style rifles and high-capacity magazine clips has gun owners rushing to buy both items at local gun stores across the state. One of those buyers, Dr. Michael Ellenberg, a chronic disease specialist. Way, I've been shooting guns in Alaska since I was six years old. You know, my son's 12 years old, he can shoot one of these. The biggest thing to address with a lot of people who caused a lot of the shootings that took place, and they're horrible shootings, and I wish they had never happened, but they did, is that many people are mentally disabled. They're on a lot of different um, drugs for their uh, issues, particularly um, antidepressants, and those have a long history of causing side effects in many patients. The reaction of gun owners has been what, since Obama? Uh, panic, panic, panic. Basically, what we're having a run on, any semi-auto rifle and handgun with a detachable box magazine. Excuse me for a moment. I tell you what, why don't you... Uh, good afternoon, gun runners. I'm so busy right now, I'm not going to be able to take your card information down. The issue is... got the other phone line ringing right now. Can you... Uh, can you hold for a moment? I'm going to put this other call on hold. Gun runners, can you hold, please? I'll be right with you. Okay, well, While guns may be loathed in other parts of the country after the recent school shooting, take a look at this gun show held inside a local Alaska high school here in Wasilla, Alaska, hometown of Sarah Palin, former Alaskan governor and Republican vice presidential candidate. Never mind the mass shooting that just took place inside another school 4,000 miles away in Connecticut. Wasilla High School's gun show goes on as scheduled, hosting a packed high school gymnasium of gun buyers and traders, as it does every year, to support the school's ice hockey team. One of the stars of the show, by the way, Dave Arino's Alaska Machine Gun Association. In the wake of the Connecticut school shooting, did you sense that there was some second thinking at, ha at having a gun show at the, the high school oh, in Wasilla? Not, not by the people who attended. They have had a show. This is the 29th year for a show at that school. They've never had an incident. The people, the community, that's people, they hunt, they fish, they like guns, they, they target shoot, they're, they enter competitions. Not at all. You would agree it's sort of ironic. Well, here's what I would tell you. 
obviously there are probably not too many schools where they where they have gun shows, but you have to understand that guns are a part of Alaska. It's a part of the community. People are raised with guns. It's not a bunch of wild-eyed wackos out there trying to overthrow the government. It's people respecting our Constitution, our history, and developing family values around these things. Alaskan State Representative Hawker blames violent video games. Uh -huh. and mental illness for many gun massacres. And he warns the state of Alaska, like many other pro-gun states, is prepared to reject through the courts new federal gun safety measures they believe are not the solution to gun violence. I think there's a, a universal understanding here in Alaska that it's, again, it's not the access to firearms, it's not the availability of firearms, it's not scapegoating large capacity magazines but we have to be proactive in how we identify and work with individuals who have a propensity for violence, who for some reason have manifest evil inside themselves. Uh, it's got nothing to do with the firearm. It has everything to do with looking to the individuals that we need to provide help and assistance for. In addition to state legislators threatening to fight new federal gun regulations, police officers in Alaska say they too may find it difficult to enforce the federal measures the majority of its citizens feel strongly against. Mike Kirst just returned from Alaska and he joins us now from his home base in San Diego, California. Mike, what do you say to those skeptical of the Alaskan gun owner's point of view and the low number of gun murders it claims to have? You know, on one hand, Alaska has far fewer residents than a lot of other states. It's the largest state in the union, but on the other hand, there are less than a million people statewide. Well, I think, I think they have a right to, to, to be a little skeptical here. Uh, you know, I, I think the impression of, of Alaska is that perhaps, it, and it's, they, you know, they think it's not a good comparison to other cities. They have this impression that it's this sort of Dodge City sort of place, you know, Clint Eastwood outlaw Josie Wales, you know, one horse town. Alaskans, particularly gun owners, feel they have a right to boast that, look, we have less murders here and yet we have more guns. So uh, they want to be a part of the conversation and they, and they think they have a legitimate reason to be a part of that conversation. Well, last month, lawmakers in several states proposed legislation that would require gun owners to purchase liability insurance, much like car and homeowners already do. Could liability insurance perhaps deter them from purchasing that gun because of the extra cost and maybe the extra paperwork involved? Well, it depends on the cost, and, and from what I've heard, it could be anywhere from 200 to 500 dollars per gun per year. And uh, in the state of California, for example, they're talking about a measure that would require gun owners to uh, buy into a 2,000 dollar a year policy, an umbrella policy, if you will, that would cover one or more firearms. So, um, you know, 200 dollars a year, 500 dollars a year um, is doable probably for, for gun owners. Uh, it might not prevent them from going out and buying one if that's what they have to do. But once you get into 2,000 dollars a year, could be higher. Uh, it could uh, it could uh, give people uh, you know pause on whether or not, whether or not they can afford a, a gun in the future. One of the gentlemen you interviewed in your story has some 200 <laughs> guns, and for a lot of people, especially around the world, that seems pretty excessive. But you point out. It's simply a way of life, um, but it's a pretty expensive way of life, isn't it? Well, well, it is, and I, and I asked this particular gentleman, Dave Arino, just that, you know, why do you need so many guns? And uh, his response was, you know, people collect sports cars. Uh, I collect guns, and uh, I suggested there are probably quite a few people out there who would argue that uh, sports cars don't shoot people. Um, and uh, Mr. Arino responded by saying, well, look, uh, there are more sports cars and, and more cars of any kind, for that matter, that kill far more people across the United States every year when you put a person behind the wheel who's driving under the influence of alcohol. In fact, I think there are about 30,000 uh, drunk driving related uh, deaths, fatalities every year in the United States, three times the number of gun related murders. For all of our friends and, and viewers out there from around the world who are watching this debate uh, in the United States, um, scratching their heads over the emotions that are involved here. Folks, when it comes to freedoms, that's just, that's America right now. That's the, the, the type of thing this country is going through over, over the issue of guns. All right, Mike Kirsch, thank you so much for your insight 
on this story. We'd love to hear from you about this story and all America's Now stories. Please write to us at an at cctv-america.com. Or you can send us a tweet. Our handle is at cctvamericasnow.